Today we're going to go over how to perform an endospore stain. So we're going to take a look at our lab book here under the topic endospore stain. An endospore is basically an evolutionary advantage for bacteria that allow it to survive harsh conditions. And we do an endospore stain to see if bacteria forms endospores. Also it's a characteristic to help identify bacteria because not all bacteria form them. We're going to look at the first question here. It says, the two most common genera of bacteria that make endospores are, and the answer is one bacillus and two clostridium. The next question, what are the two observable characteristics of endospore forming cells that can aid in the identification of the organism? Well, one could be the shape and another could be the location. The next question asks us about C. difficile and we do not have that organism today. So we're going to skip that question. And you'll notice the last question, it says define a vegetative cell. Well, they're actively growing rather than forming spores. They are red at first, but usually as they die and form endospores, they'll show up green, and that is after an endospore stain. Right now we're going to make a smear of our culture. We're going to take a slide and chem tissue to wipe off any smudges that there could be on here. We'll go ahead and set that down. Get some DI water, put that in the center, just a little drop will do. And we're going to use good aseptic techniques and move this out of our way so we're not reaching over and getting any other organisms on there. Then we're going to light the Bunsen burner. If you don't know how to do this, you should check out another one of our videos that will demonstrate how to do that. And now we're going to take our inoculating loop and flame it to get it sterilized. And it's going to show an orange red color and that means you're doing it correctly. And you're going to let it sit for about 30 seconds. Take your bacteria, flame open. some bacteria on your inoculating loop. And flame closed. Put the cap back on. And mix it into the DI water here. And then again, you'll want to flame your inoculating loop to get the bacteria off of it. And there it is. So we're going to take the slide that we've just made and heat fix it. And you might have to let it sit and dry out for a little bit. It's better to use an old culture because endospores usually form as cells die and it will be easier to observe with an older culture. This is what your slide should look like once it's properly dried. You're going to tear a piece of paper towel about the size of the smear and place it over the smear. Make sure that the paper towel is small enough that it will not hang over the edges of the slide. I'll go ahead and make it a little bit smaller there. It's about the size of the smear. Then you're going to flood the paper towel with the uh, malachite green using a clothespin and rest the side of the mouth on a beaker. Now that it's been flooded, you're going to rest it on the beaker that you've allowed to boil.
you want to steam the slide for about five minutes. Steaming the slide means that the dye itself is hot enough to generate steam. If the dye starts to dry, you want to make sure to add more malachite green and do not let the slide dry out. After your slide has been steaming for about five minutes, you're going to use your clothespin to remove it from the steam and you'll turn that off. And then you're going to use four steps to remove the paper towel that is on the smear. And you are going to throw the paper towel, or I should say discard it, into a beaker, not into the sink. Once you have steamed your slide and used the malachite green, you're going to rinse the slide with the eye water and you're going to do it in a waterfall way. Don't put too much on because you don't want it to remove your bacteria. And then you're going to use saffron to counter stain the emalachite green. And you're going to do the um, just let it sit there for about 30 seconds. Once your 30 seconds is up, you're going to use DI water again to rinse the slide. Again in the waterfall. You're going to use the bibulous paper you blot it. And there you have your endospore stain. This is what your slide should look like once you have properly gone through the procedure of making an endospore stain. We're not going to look at it through a slide today, but we are going to use this book to help us see what it should look like under a slide. So this is a photographic atlas for the microbiology laboratory and this is the third edition. We're going to turn to page 41 and look at figure 5-22. For A here, notice that this is an example of vegetative cells. There are no spores there even though you can mistakenly think these tiny little green dots here are. And then we'll take a look at B. B in this specimen, the spores are still within the mother cell and that's why you see the green within the red vegetative cells. And C, notice that this is um, spores forming here, there and there, um, and these are visible spores.